And as always, we're going to be looking for accurate context, good risk management, and always exercising good patience. Everybody who's traded has gone through periods of time where their strategy hasn't worked. Where if not a hard stop, you should reevaluate the trades you're in uh, based on time. That's what we're here for, is to put ourselves in the best success. A trading routine does that, builds that habit, lets you know what to work on, what to reflect on, and what to improve on the next day. Good morning and welcome to Make Hogue Money. I am Mortimer Duke. Uh, I'm sorry, John Hoagland, <clears throat> Senior Performance Coach here at Top Step. We've got a little bit of history here in futures and looking forward to seeing what we can find today. This is the CFTC disclaimer. It states that there is a lot of risk in futures trading. These are leveraged products. You stand to lose more than your initial investment. You should only be using risk capital to trade with. Risk capital to me is money I can afford to lose. We are not suggesting the purchase or sale of anything we're doing here today. This is uh, my account. It is a live account. You guys are going to be coming up with the trade ideas. We're going to vote, and we'll see what happens. Of course, there is no past performance that is ever indicative of future results. The rules for Make Coke Money are simple. We, we do want kindness and respect above everything. There's always differences of opinions and a million ways to look at markets. It's what makes them so good. And I have a couple of people enabled to speak and share their charts today if they choose to. If you come up with a trade idea, the context is <clears throat> always going to be helpful. <clears throat> We're going to use the chat rooms in the YouTube and the Zoom to discuss trades. We'll poll you for voting on trades. We're going to focus on the MES for opportunities for now. We're not going to trade just to trade. We didn't take a trade yesterday because there was nothing to do on the late session of Make Hogue Money. We're not going to take losing trades, which is, of course, meant to be a joke. We know there are going to be losses in trading. We just have to cut them, use good risk management techniques, and move on. F feedback is always appreciated for Make Hogue Money. It's a way we're going to continue to improve and, and, and expand on it if, uh, if possible. <clears throat> you, can send, <clears throat> you can send feedback to me, jhoagland at topstep.com, J-H-O-A-G-L-A-N-D, at topstep.com. Sorry, I keep clearing here. Got a little frog going on here. All right. Let's bring up the platform. Let's clean things up a little bit. Who is going to talk today? I see we have Randolph here. I'll get Randolph in here right away. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Rick, Tim, JT, Tom, my brother watching on YouTube this morning. Good to see you, buddy. Dan Trader, Gnostic, Jason, Andy, Robert, Vlad. Good to see you. Leslie, good morning. Looks like sells today. Linda, good morning. And Philo, Philo Beto. What's happening, Mortimer? Hey, how you doing, pal? Doing pretty good. Yeah. Wish, uh, winter would leave. Yeah, no kidding. We had we had summer for about one five or five or six days, and then back to winter. Yeah. All right. Uh, so, I saw Tom was on this morning. Yeah, he's on. He's watching on YouTube right now. Is he? Yeah. My little brother. I got my big brother and my little brother. So, what are you thinking, Randolph? You got VWAP, it seems to be holding resistance right now. We got Leslie who says, looks like sells today. Are you with me? Hmm? Are you with me? No, I'm here. I'm, I'm looking to sell rallies. Sell rallies. What do you think of the uh, opportunity we have here up near VWAP? Yeah, absolutely. If it's up there. All right, well, let's... Where is it at? Where is it trading now? Uh, 41, 40 quarter. VWAP's 42 half. Yeah, got lots of peaks up there, too. All right, so we're going to send a poll. Uh, look for shorts. 
maybe an OR trade. Yeah. All right. Whatever the consensus is. All right. We're going to pull everybody here. It's look how many look at it's bounced up, it bounced up view up, view up one, two, three, Bunch four, of times, five, right? six, seven. So we are looking at a possible opening range trade or an opportunity to look for shorts. I'm launching the, the polls here. If you're on YouTube, please vote. Please vote if you're on the Zoom meeting also. If you want to do the opening range trade, just type into the chat yes. If you want to do the if you don't want to do the opening range trade, type in no. Pretty sure we'll be looking for shorts here relatively early in this session. We've got everybody pretty much in agreement. 83% on Zoom, 62% on YouTube. Edgar wants to wait for the market to open and, and, and let the first hour, uh, first half hour of trade trade out. Stephen, yes. Shaw says no unless it's short. Yes to the opening range trade, says Will. L looking for some input here on the YouTube side. Jason says yes. I think uh, I think we we might. Sometimes if, you know if you don't have your order in. Yeah, you miss it. You miss it, you know. Well, we're going to do our best not to miss it. Don't, just don't get in. Morning, Vince. Steve says yes. You know, you're going to put it, you're going to put a sell in, you know, put it at 41, you know, a couple ticks off there. All right. So we're looking for a short and and we've got a pretty much a yes for the opening range trade. So we got about one and a half minutes here before that happens. Leslie says yes. We're looking for a short. I mean, you could you could do it at forty one forty and give it three what three three cents. Yeah, short on view up. So we gotta wait. Right, we'll just put it in here. John doesn't like to wait. No, no, I didn't. I didn't. Uh, I didn't get short here. I actually put in an order to sell it at forty-two, where view at is forty-two half. And we'll see if we get the opportunity during the opening range trade. Leslie, yes. Jeffrey, yes. Short off view at forty-three. Darren is with you on that. I like Everybody Sean's else is idea. probably thinking the same thing. Yeah, maybe. I like you Sean's know, it's, probably, it's, it's probably got a range trade, so you could probably play both sides. Just keep your stops close. Yeah, you know? that would be... Edgar says he wants to wait for the first half hour before trading. Let's see what happens with the opening range here. I mean, it was a... Nothing burger. Well, yesterday had a nice break the day before... Um, after that, it was a nothing burger. So here's the oh, here's I didn't the, watch it all day. But. Here's the one minute chart coming into the opening range trade now. It's already jumping around. We do have numbers at nine o'clock. So opening range. I need my glasses. 41.39.75 is the high so far. The low is 37.5. <clears throat> we're, we're about two, two points here for the opening range. We still have that offering at 42, which is just shy of VWAP. Whipped a little bit. 37.75 is the low of the opening range so far. <clears throat> All right, the opening range is over. I've got an offer to sell 
one tick below the opening range, and we've got an offer up at 42 up against the VWAP. Everybody seems to have a short bias this morning, so one way or the other, we're going to end up short. Hi, Sam. <clears throat> okay, we just took out the high of the opening range. VWAP, 42 quarter. We're short at 42. Where's, where's my risk on this, Randolph? Yeah, three cents. Just three cents? Mm hmm. You're gonna, you're gonna, you're short of where? 42. Yeah, 45. Steve is looking for a long entry. The opening range is the low of the session so far. Mm hmm. You can see that here. There's the opening range. Here we are. Seem to be kind of stuck here at VWAP for now. I mean, we're in a very short time frame. We've been open for three minutes. We got other traders who are thinking the same way, you know? Ah, uh, the old difference of opinion, huh? Eagle, Eagle Hawk one long because the daily chart says. Here's the daily, and I'm not. I don't disagree with that. We were holding last week's low. Daryl's seeing a lot of long bias in here. Why is our opening range only one minute? Well, Will, <coughs> the opening range in the pit wasn't time bound. It was however long and whatever range it took for all the brokers that had orders to be filled on the open to get them done. If it was a busy morning, the opening range may be four minutes long, five minutes long, and several points wide. Um... Because of electronic trading, if there's something that somebody wants done on the open and the efficiency of the execution in electronic trading, I think a minute is plenty of time. But there are those that look at a longer or even a shorter time frame when it comes to the opening range. We have... Uh, we have somebody here named Rob Mortimer. Mortimer. Well, I'm Mortimer. You're Randolph. <laughs> he's long because he says the tick is going positive yeah, was, too quickly. I was, I, was, I was entering a couple orders. Well, VWAP sure seems to be sticky here. What happened to the, well, that's the daily. Here we go. Here's the 30 minute. Somebody's saying something at nine, right? What's that? I said, somebody's speaking at nine. No, the, the talking feds are in lockdown because the FOMC meeting is next Wednesday. Uh, we have Case Schiller and FHFA home price indices at nine o'clock or at eight at. Nine. 
eight o'clock it was. They're already out. I'm sorry. Nine o'clock consumer confidence, new home sales. So consumer confidence can be a, an interesting one. Both of them. I mean, they're both relatively impactful. Delta is negative. Let's see if that's correct. It is correct. This is presenting as accurate today. It's a good question, Joe. What is the what is a what is a downside target we're looking for? Anyone? Bueller? 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 It's the daily. Off those lows, probably 20. 20? 20? 41, 20? 25 would be doable. JT says 30 quarter. You're there. The low. Yeah, quite a few bounces around there in the 20, just below 20. Where's our next naked point of control below? I'd have to look on this. All the way down here, 4110 is the next naked point of control below price. You can always reload too, you know? Yeah. We know we're sensing reloading now because we're nowhere. Yeah, I know. In opening range, the low of the session. Where'd you cover at? We're still short. Oh, well, there it is. Okay. Yeah, you got you got a three point stop on this. I got some glare on my screen. That's yeah. okay. It's all right. Yeah, we're still short right here, right where we are, right at VWAP. <laughs> Trading for animals. That's what I use. Bueller. Bueller. <laughs> Joe says overnight is a overnight is a good target because high probability of the overnight high or overnight low gets taken out. There's I don't our, like the fact that it's hanging around. Sticking around here. too long. Yeah. Well, do we... Fish or I'm cut... Not, you're not risking much, so... Fish or cut bait. Here's the poll. Uh, on YouTube, if you want to fish, put in fish. If you want to cut bait, say cut bait. The uh, idea behind this short is that most people seem to have a short bias today or are looking for shorts. So we let the opening range play out, but we shorted against VWAP right here. VWAP has been holding as resistance to this point. But it's hanging around here an awful lot, an awful long time. And 
we know that the opening range is the low of the session, which usually has me looking for longs. We have got, well, I'm not really getting a lot of, of uh, everybody says you know, cut bait, cut bait, cut bait, fish, fish. Short entry, too early, cut bait. It's about even on YouTube, it looks like. Well, you're so close to your stop, so. Yeah, we'll let it play out. Yep, Jillian. Too many short bias. Market needs to deal some pain. Cut bait. Yeah, just, just. Well, Listen. I'm saying, yeah, I mean, I say wait. Yeah. Mr. Hoyt is on YouTube today. Yeah, I agree with Greg. Whatever's coming out, let's just see what happens. We'll see what happens then. We did not open the session with a gap. Or maybe we did. Let's see. Uh, yeah. By a tick. Here's the opening tick. Here's yesterday's low. So gaps closed already. Opening, remain, opening range remains the low of the session. Rick took a quick short in the NASDAQ earlier, calling it a day for now. Up 300 bucks. Good day. Nice job. We only had one vote for Fisher cut bait, and it was cut bait on the Zoom meeting. <laughs> Buying some silver. A lot of folks were saying cut bait. You're buying silver? Yeah, it was down 30, 40 cents. This store, I mean, the last couple of days, you could buy it on the open. But it ain't done pretty well, so we'll see. Look at that. Here's the daily. Yeah, silver's a little more volatile. Gold's like a slug. Uh -huh. Yeah, silver's a nasty market. Well, besides being pretty, it's got industrial uses. Right. Yeah. A lot of positive earnings, Matt is saying. So far, we're expecting a small range or something bigger. Maybe a breakout will change the day. Yeah, Joe is pointing out that uh, 32, 42, 26. Now it's holding VWAP on the other side now. Austin's still long on the off the open. What are you doing, Lacey? This morning, I think she needs to go out, but I'm not going anywhere for a while here, at least. Hang tight. Sell another one. Well, we've got an order in to sell it a tick below the opening range. If it starts heading lower, we're, we're going in. The trend is your friend. Right, Mortimer? Yeah, sometimes. Unless, unless you get unless you get beaks involved. 
our yeah. size right here. <laughs> 45, 50. That's Tom. There you go. Divergence. Yeah. Now we're short two. We're going to cover them. Um, I don't know. I'm waiting for instructions. I'd take one in at 34, 35 area. Wow, that's pretty short. And then just let the other one ride. All right, well, we took one in. There you go, John. You're... No, there you go. There you go, you guys. Did you take one in? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, the first one we made eight points on. Now cool. we're now we're short sure. in worse location, but if this thing gets legs, we'll be in good shape. You know, I'm still risking my stop is still at the same spot, fifty forty five quarter. So I, we're risking I, eight points. Yeah, just leave your leave your stop up there and I just you know, let her ride personally. Jason took six points on one there. There you go. You know, that 4130 area, I mean, if you're looking to scalp it. The low, overnight low. Mm -hmm. Like buy it in at 30. One pretty and a half. I like Eagle Hawk One's idea of forty-one twenty. Hey, the more the merrier. Here's our push to the low here. And I, I there, I agree it there. Bounce, it could bounce though. You could always reload. Joe says overnight low as the target. We got 10 minutes here still before the numbers come out. to uh, be two-fisted at times. Nice buy, 33 and a half. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is a nice buy. Captain Price is waiting until after the numbers. Yeah, you're building support down there, so. We are. Matt Hoyt says 41. 12 to 15 if we crack the low is what he sees as a target. No, now, you're right there. Now that's what I... Uh, oh, 41. Yeah, definitely. That's what I was looking at here, Matt, on the profiles. 41.10 is the next naked point of control low. Plus 4,100 is a psychological. Of course. But we're not counting any chickens before they hatch here. Eggs. <laughs> Beaks and feet. <laughs> we got Beaks. last week's low in play right now. That's that purple line. Yeah. We uh, rejected it yesterday. 
tested it, rejected it, rejected it. Another test now. What's going to happen? I want it now. <laughs> Look at how negative Delta is. <clears throat> and that is correct. Showing that number came out already, right? Here. No, not yet. <clears throat> it came out as, as yes. home price index. Yeah, that was earlier. Oh, okay. That's Eastern time, right? Yeah. So new sales. <clears throat> Got new home sales and consumer confidence. New home sales coming up. Or... I can't see I can't see that being positive. But. Or lack of consumer confidence, whichever you choose whichever you choose. Uh <clears throat> yeah. They're looking for a small change a little bit lower and as far as con as far as confidence is concerned. You got a you got a resting buy down there? Where? <laughs> Do you here, I'll put one in. I'll put in a seed here at 4110. Well, there you go. Okay. <clears throat> Usually if I do that, it, it, it sees it and runs away from it. Let's see if the bottom falls out here. Should be playing free falling by Tom Petty. Yeah, that might get, put it in the mood, huh? Yeah. Dollar kind of spiked. One oh one point seven. Hmm. Hmm. I like that. Especially if you're long silver. Just once, just like run to my target and hit it. Been waiting 30 years for that to happen. Where do we find the info to switch contracts? Uh, well, if, as far as equities are concerned, I think it's like the second Tuesday of the month. But I always just watch watch volume. And you know, if you're watching the prep, I'm usually letting you know when, as long as it's one of the products that we watch. Like this week, Monday, we switched to June natural gas. The uh, crude and natural gas are those products that roll over every month. <laughs> but I usually just watch goal, watch uh, watch volume. <clears throat> Five minutes. Five minutes to the number. Yes, you, you're going to want to watch the volume in the ags, and you want to be aware of when first notice day is. You, you don't want to be in a contract after first notice day. Because first notice day is when you can be, um, you know, notified to pick up your soybeans. Mm-hmm. 
you know, watch if you're trading grains, watch first notice day. Your grains, the ags are, are a little bit different than most of the other futures contracts in the fact that people actually take delivery. <laughs> and you don't want 5,000 bushels of corn dumped on your yard. Michael came out early 104.2. Is that what we're looking for? Well, that's that's the last one. They were looking for 104.0, at least on this website that I'm looking at. Uh, I don't see anything out here just yet. So on, you know, both of the... Um, Sites that I look at last was 104.2. They're looking for 104 even on this one. The nothing burger. Well, the problem is I don't think most people have seen it yet. They have new home sales. It is out. Home. Look at that, 104.2. It is out, financial juice, nice. So a nothing burger. Let's see what new home sales does or uh, existing home sales or what is it? New home sales. New home sales, 632,000. They were looking for 600, well, 632,000 is what they're estimating. It was 604,000 last month. So it's lower? Uh, the new home sales I don't see as out yet. Sam, Delta Divergence, we're on the low. Haven't been able to take it out with some pretty good negative Delta. It was one of my concerns as well, Sam. Good eye. Good eye. Stop just above VWAP, John. Like 41, 41. That's where yeah. we that's where we got it. sales is higher than expected bullish 101.3 that'd be an opportunity to sell it again uh, consumer confidence actually there's two of them hang on <clears throat> 
new home sales, 9.6% higher. My goodness. Cut bait. No. Might be a sell opportunity. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Will. No. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm with you, Will. There's a, sh you know, just a shortage of homes. That's why it's what I'm picking up on. Plus, it's springtime. It's a buying season. True. If it heads south from here, it could be uh, uh, serious. Consumer confidence, 101.3, looking for 104. That's not good. Well, we'll see what happens here, huh? That's what I'm saying, Joe. I think it was might have, might have been a sell opportunity on that spike. Yeah, buy the rumors and sell the facts, right? Yeah. That's right, Daryl. Want it now. <laughs> so Matt is asking, bonds continue to rally. What does that tell you? What's that? Matt is asking, bonds continue to rally. What does that tell you? Rand Yields are dropping. Randolph? Yields are dropping. Is that a potential almost flight to quality? Oh, I think that, uh, you know, there are words out there. So The recession word? Mm-hmm. We'll see what happens. We'll just let this play out.
I'm just. Are the yields still inverted? What's that? Are the yields still inverted? Oh, yeah. The two and the 10? Oh, yeah. 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 I'm just kidding, Joe. It's not a, we're not in a flight to quality situation here. Uh, I can tell you right now. Hang on. So the yield curve, the two-year is uh, 4.09. The 10-year is 3.49. What's that? The two-year, 4.09%. Yeah. The ten-year three point four nine. Yeah, that that tells you that longer term we're looking for a slowdown. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the best yield you can get is on a six-month five percent or I bonds or I bonds. Mm -hmm. Is that what he did? Six, yeah, yesterday, 6.97, I think. <clears throat> Correlation between futures and the bond market. Higher yields mean a stronger dollar, right? Mortimer? <laughs> I'm not smart enough. I'm not an economist. Yeah, typically. What's, what's the DX slide? It's a little higher. Hang around 101.7. Yeah, it's been rallying you know, most of the day more, and overnight. Yeah. You going to walk away from this one for the day or what are you going to do? I don't know. What should we do? Do we leave it as is? I'll manage it and get out before the end of the day if we haven't gotten out. You're making lower highs. You know, if we accept below last week's low, I think there's a, you know, pretty good opportunity for us to reach this target. Yeah. I mean, you can take your money and run too, so. Joe says stay. Eagle says, leave it as it is. So we'll just let this I play mean, you, out. You're up, um, you're up on the day. What'd you go? So you give a little back, worst case, right? Yeah. Rob says, don't touch. Vince is going to get short right where our stop is. <laughs> Above it. Yeah. Well, 41.40. Oh, where your stop is. Got yeah, it. Right. Yeah. That's like a view up. What price is scratch? If you take it in, John, it's going to, the, the bottom is going to fall. Oh, of, of, right of, of course. If I don't, it'll hit the stop. It's just inevitable. Yeah. Murphy's Morgan. law. That's Mortimer's law. <laughs> Here it goes. Price for the scratch of a, of the day, uh, thirty seven quarters where we're short. So, uh, forty one. No, thirty seven. Forty five quarter would be a scratch between both trades. Uh, we could take it now and reload. 
against that 4130, your 10% rule? Why are our, our, our targets 4110? That's gluttonous, but could happen. Have you seen me? Hmm? Have you seen me? Yeah, no, I cover here. Good day. Or move your stop down to 35 or something. No, I told it I wanted it now. Yeah, I take it, Jim. Why? Why? We got a good thing going here. Don't get greedy. Mom always said you were the greedy one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was always the mean one. You going to reel it in? No. <clears throat> Let's ask. Type in yep. fish or cut bait. It's not showing up on my screen. Mortimer says fish. Move the stop. Fish. Everybody's saying fish. Cut bait, fish, fish. Fish, cut bait, sell more, cut bait. This is Travis's first target. Fish, fish, fish. Cut bait. Fish. Cut bait. Fish. Cut bait. Fish, fish, <laughs> fish. We're fishing. Cut bait. Okay, there is an overnight TPO point of control down here at 4122. Hoyt Told says you. fish. Told you. Hoyt says fish. I, I agree, Travis. You know, take your profits and reload if it gets up around 40, 35, 36. Fish, cut. You had your chance, Jen. Oh, you guys. Where's the fortitude? Where's the greed? <laughs> Vin says, sell a hundred at the market. <laughs> Where's the greed? So 35 is that, oh, that last week's low. <clears throat> mm-hmm. If I was a uh, S and P local, <clears throat> I'd sell a one lot just to down tick the market. I'd be putting in a twenty six. I'm putting in a, putting in a twenty six print right now. <clears throat> the hypothesis for this short. We voted. No, we were looking at VWAP. 
up here was holding. So we sold it against VWAP. And then when the opening range got taken out, we added another one. So we made some money on the first short. Now we're holding the second short. The fact that we're showing price below last week's low, that we've taken out the low from the other day, from the overnight, actually, um, you know, we're putting in lower highs, lower lows. You covered, right? No. Just joking. <laughs> no. Spending a lot of time down here. Mr. Hoyt. <clears throat> yeah, and it's building time below the overnight low, spending time yeah. and volume below the last week's low. But I mean, you could you could get a range day, John. That's why I'm saying. Hey guys, what's up, Matt? How are you? I'm hey, doing well. How are you guys? Good. What's going on? I'm just staying patient, having some fun with you. Yeah, good. <laughs> Good. What are your thoughts? I mean, I I feel pretty strongly about the forty one fifteen for profit. I, I just feel like that's you know I got a little pitch for it. There's a line with good good frequency on the one hour. You can probably see it on the thirty minute. I mean, uh, you know, I just drew a line from uh, the high on Tuesday the eighteenth, connected to the high on Wednesday the nineteenth, projected forward. We got a we got a few minutes here. Why don't you show us? Yeah. Sure. Okay. Why do you start video here? Yep. Start share screen and then pick the screen and then and then share it. And what do we do? Dollar dollars are alien. What a one point eight four. I don't know, for some reason I can't see the share screen. It should be green at the bottom. Maybe I'm on the wrong thing here. Maybe you covered the, the thing up. If you go on your toolbar on your computer, look for the zoom thing, and then click on that, then, then it should pop up for you. Yeah, I mean, I see it says top step. It says my name, Rick Hoagland, John Hoagland. I can mute right it. Right at the bottom, it says share screen. It's green. I'm telling you, it must be covered up. Man. How do I uncover it? No? Here we go. Ha. Come on, while we're young. All right, are we there? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Sorry, guys. So, how do I move this out of the way? Okay. Here, I'll make this easy. There, can you see me? Yep. Okay, so, what I'm doing is, we connect the dots. This is the highest high right here. Uh -huh. Like that. That low. That high. Okay, so we're going to draw a pitchfork off of those. We go high. Low. High. This is a minor shot five shift pitchfork, which connects the A point to the C point. So it's kind of like a channel, but it has a mathematical probability of success. And you can see the target is this yellow line here, which is right now at 41, 16 quarter, if it hits it by 10 o'clock, because this is a one hour chart. Okay. That's it, I mean, you can see, you know, price respected it here, got smacked. It kind of already has been tested, you know, I feel like this baby's alive, so. <clears throat> I feel like this is my target, and my stop would be above this red candle, or, if I go to a 30 minute chart, maybe I could squeeze a better stop, but no, it's still 44 quarter, 44 half. 
Then when this bar closes here, I can move my stop just above the high on this current candle at 41, 40 half. So I'd be like 41 even on the stop. Mm -hmm. Just follow it, follow it down as the candles close lower. All right. What's the data plan, man? <clears throat> yeah, maybe we get there by 11 o'clock or 12 o'clock today. That's the quartile line. Yeah, the data line is a quartile. I mean, you can, to keep it simple, the pitchfork. Oh, there you go. Okay. There we go. So that's easier, right? Typically, the pitchfork is just the one, two, three, and projects forward. I project the lines backwards also because I want to see if there's any prior mojo on the line. You know, here I got nothing really. Um, and then your first line past everything is the first warning line. So the rules apply. If the price cracks this line, maybe it pulls back and then travels to the next line with 80% chance. I mean, it looks pretty good. Like, we're... we're you know, I think a pullback, maybe we come back to touch this line at 35 even, 34 even, but then we're 80%, you know, boom, headed this way. Boom. Boom, play the percentages, baby. I like the boom. It's yeah, like right? it's like listening I mean, to here. John Madden. <laughs> boom. How does that go? Bada bing, bada boom. Bing, pow, bang. Yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, this area right here, that's what I'm waiting for. Like, this is when I draw these pitchforks. You know, I see a pitchfork. It works. You know, price kind of respects it. It respects the bottom. It kind of drifts sideways, comes back into play. And when this big red bar, you know, when price touches this yellow slope line and then gets smacked, closes far away from it, I really want to sell this, you know, I'm looking for another touch pretty quick to sell it. Then it doesn't reach it again until 3 o'clock. I'm not doing anything at 3 o'clock. You no, know, so. We're sleeping. Yeah, right. I mean, if I was going to be an overnight player, I'd probably maybe just try to get in with a six-point stop, which isn't bad for a play down of this line, which would have been nice. Um, oops. All right. Can't win <laughs> them all, but that's okay. You can't get all the setups, but, you know, the key about this system is we don't know what's going to happen. Right. The good news is when you have some kind of system, this system, when I'm right, when the price does what I'm expecting, that's where I know when to get out. That's why it's, it's you know, you lose a lot, but when you're right, you know you're making a oh, good chunk of change oh. with a small amount of risk. Right. That's the key. Love that. Because you lose four times in a row, you catch one winner, and you got three and a half to one. You know, maybe better depending on the entry and the setup. So that's the key. Thank you, Matt. I, I met somebody else who's big into the pitchforks too. I'm giving them a, a better look. I can't figure out on the platform how to do it, but they're great. Love it. Thank you, Matt. You got it. Yeah, it's hard to do on the platform. I mean, I, and I have a hard time doing market profile on this trading view platform because I, I, a lot of the time in the morning I look at your levels. And I try to combine it up because there's a lot of, you know, that value area sometimes is just like a brick wall. Price hits it and then reject it, you know. It's mm -hmm. like, it'd be nice to be able to catch one of those and try to combine it with this um, a little bit some, sometimes. Let's see. The tick -tick and a lot of times I'll use a range bar because it makes the overnight not so drifty. Um, but it changes, it changes things, as you can see. Right. So the key is whatever you enter the trade, however you enter the trade, stick with that frame. <laughs> Don't go flipping around from a five minute, <laughs> right. thirty minute, sixty minute. Right, right, yep. yeah. All right, thank you, Matt. John. Yeah. So on uh, April twentieth, below is forty one sixteen seventy four, and on the twenty first, it was forty one eighteen twenty three. So. Well, we're going to see if we can't catch this naked point of control from the overnight from a few days ago. We're, we'll trim it up a little bit here. And I'm going to take the stop and I'm going to make it break even. That's S&Ps. That's not ES. Right. <clears throat> so we'll see if we get this target. I'll be happy with that. If not, no loss on this trade. We're still up 40 bucks. We'll see what happens. Yeah. I got to run, guys. You guys yep. have a great day. Yep, me too.
Got to go. Be all right. See you yeah. guys. Thanks for playing. Yeah. Thanks, man. Thank you, Randolph. Thank you all for joining us and your Thanks, excellent Talk ideas on trading today. Have a great session, I'm, everyone. I'm glad. Uh, well, well. Take care. See you guys. See you next time.